The tank commander is responsible basically for everyone in the tank, the safety, and uh, ensure the gunner and lay the gunner on his target. When the tank commander or a crew member identifies the target, the tank commander just goes ahead and issues his fire command, and you all work together to get it, the target destroyed. The tank commander sits in the right rear portion of the tank turret. He operates the 50 caliber machine gun mounted in the small sub turret, or cupola, located on top of the main turret. Inside the turret, he has a complex set of controls to carry out his tasks. This piece of equipment right here is a tank commander override, and he can uh, move the tank, turret right, left, elevate the gun, depress the gun, fire the gun, and, and, and do some lead if he's firing at a moving target. This piece of equipment is the night sight. It's an extension from the gunner's night sight, so we can see exactly what the gunner's seeing at night or during the day, because uh, sometimes this sight works a lot better than your daylight sight. This piece of equipment right here is a laser rangefinder, and what it does is it sends a laser out, reflects off the target, comes back, and that will give you your range. This piece of equipment here is your 50 caliber night sight, it's a passive elbow. This is your 50 caliber day sight. The passive elbow will gather the ambient light source, and it gathers it, and it makes it that much more brighter, whereas the thermal sight is based on temperature contrast. Uh, a human being is much more, has much more heat than a tree. And at night, this system will basically take that and, and reflect it on a, almost like a television screen in there. And it's all done with electronics. And uh, it, it's very, very well defined. And, it's, and that's why the Army's gone now and said that this will be your uh, primary site from now on, even during the day. <laughs> The next crewman in seniority is the gunner. The gunner sits in front of the commander and operates the main 105 millimeter gun on the tank commander's instructions. He controls the elevation and traverse of the main gun and operates its many other features, including the stabilization system and laser range finder. The stabilization system automatically compensates for rough terrain and motion keeping the tank gun aimed precisely at a given point, even during movement. Another innovation of the M60A3 is the laser rangefinder. In spite of the power of modern tank guns, the projectile drops several feet during the course of its flight due to gravity. By accurately determining the range to the target, the tank's ballistic computer can calculate how many degrees the gun must be elevated to compensate for gravity. The third tanker in the turret is the loader, responsible for loading the main gun. The loader must combine strength and agility. Each of these rounds of ammunition weighs over 50 pounds. They must carefully be loaded into the breech of the gun, even when the tank is bouncing and crashing across rough terrain. Isolated from the turret crew in the front of the hull is the driver. Driving a modern tank is surprisingly simple, but care must be taken as an M60 weighs over 60 tons and can reach speeds over 30 miles per hour. The essence of tank tactics is teamwork. Every member of the crew must perform flawlessly for the tank to survive on the modern battlefield. The U.S. Army expects that its tank crews will be able to get off three rounds of accurately aimed fire in the first 15 seconds of combat.
Corps was still using the older M60 type, although with some modifications compared to earlier versions of this vehicle. To better protect the tank against Iraqi anti-tank missiles, some of the M60s had a new reactive armor layered on top of their existing steel armor. When struck by an enemy missile, this armor exploded outward to weaken the impact of the enemy warhead.